everybody, welcome to Bearcat Insider. Um, I'm in the office of Todd Southern, which these days means <laughs> something's happening. Something's happening. Um, and I figured I would end up here whenever I got the email today, uh, <laughs> just after lunchtime, that said, starting tomorrow, we will go into online learning until January 19th. Yep. So I think I've done my part. So wh- what's going on, Mr. Southern? Well, we've got us what you would call a situation. And so, you know, it's one of these deals, Travis, that um, right now we have a total number of 18 positive cases within the district. Now, I say that, and everybody needs to understand that actually, with the exception of one person, all these people have tested positive while we've been out and have called us and said, you know, hey, we've got it. Hey, we're okay. not coming back. We're not coming thing. back. We're gotcha. out. And and we had one hit yesterday at the middle school. So we were good there. So, you know, that wasn't the number itself was a concern because they haven't been around with the exception of that one. The number that started causing concern with us was the number of kids who are out and the percentage of kids who are out absent and the percentage of kids who are in quarantine. Okay. okay. And so... Being the situation that we're in, you know, sometimes you look at things and you go, you've got this gut feeling that just kind of hits you and you kind of go, oh, I don't really like that. Yeah. And so yesterday at the high school, we had 77 kids out absent. Okay. 22 kids were total uh, were quarantined, which set, which is 17% of the student body wasn't there. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So today... Uh, we had uh, 64 kids out, but we had 26 kids going to quarantine, which represents about 14% of that student body there. So I wasn't real fired up about that. Well, we started looking at the middle school. The middle school uh, yesterday had 19 kids out. Today, they had 24 kids out. Total number of quarantine went from 8 yesterday to 10 today percentage absent went from 13 to 16 percent out of the student body so we started looking at this and started going man this is this is not the way we want to go with this at all and so what i did today is i brought in uh, all the principals administrators and, and showed them the numbers and i also showed them the numbers from the intermediate school and elementary school and they're not terrible terrible uh the intermediate school had 33 kids absent yesterday 23 today the number of kids quarantined went up from 8 to 10. So, I mean, that's kind of going, in, and the percentage absent went from 8 to 6%. So we're okay there. That's, that wasn't totally alarming. The one thing is a little bit alarming there is we do have five uh, faculty and staff members out with it. Yeah. Uh, that happened again during uh, the break. And the elementary school is one that little skittish on we've got 31 kids out yesterday 33 out today we got 17 kids in quarantine that represents about 11 percent of our kids that campus out and so we started thinking about it and you know we started going down the route of okay we'll we'll close the high school and we'll we'll just close the middle school and the numbers justify it we felt like but then we got to talk a little bit more you know one of the things about our district is it's small and it's intertwined. Everybody's got a kid at every campus, just about. You know, they go, I, I'll have kids from the elementary school jump my back fence to hang around and play with Avery, and I'll have kids from the intermediate school do the same, and middle school kids coming over for Cooper. You know, yeah. we got to talking about that and kind of just felt like, you know what, maybe the best course of action in this situation is just to shut the entire thing down and, and go to remote because we just don't like what we're seeing right now. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, and I know you remember the, the big swine flu outbreak in the late 2000s, early 2010s. I don't remember exactly what year, but there was a, a percentage that yeah. the state kind of circled that yeah. said, hey, if, if you get to this percent right. of kids out, right. we, we think it's it's good to probably shut right. down. I don't remember what the percentage is, but I'm looking at, I'm cheating and looking at your sheet of paper, 14 and 16 and 6 and 11, whenever it's roughly probably 10 percent of the whole district yeah i mean when you start looking at and we i kind of look at a campus space when it starts getting double digits that's what dr colson kept on saying is man i don't like double digit numbers and and i agree with that yeah. and and so you know we're trying to be cautious with this we're trying to be smart with it and you know and and i don't want to ever 
we try to use common sense. We try to sit back and look at it and say, hey, wh- what are, what's the numbers showing us? We don't want to be the skies falling. Yeah. falling. But, you know, it, there's something about it that we just didn't like. And so that's why we made that call. Well, I think looking at the data, and that's what you have to do. Right. Uh, we have a good opportunity right now to flatten the curve before the curve gets really out of control. Right. And that's so and that's and that's a that's the big thing that we're always worried about. It's not what the numbers are right now, it's what can the numbers possibly sure. become. Yeah. And, and so, you know, when we did this at the high school in the in the fall, you know, we went from three, we shut it down at three positive cases, it jumped to fifteen, and then when we came back it kind of leveled itself out. You'd have a pop here and there. Okay. And so that's kind of the approach we're gonna take in this particular situation because the numbers are just not where we want them to be. We, we've got the opportunity to use a couple. We've got some free days. Yeah. We've got a couple of weekends, and we've got MLK. So we've got five free days to help clear some things out. Sure. And so we just felt like if we're going to do it, let's pull a trigger right now and utilize those days, and, and let's see if we can kind of get this thing back down a little bit. Well, and like you said, the preventative measures of, yeah. of it getting to a point where, where it is a huge problem, uh, it's always better to, what do they say, an ounce of prevention is mm. better than a, I, I don't know the saying. Something exactly. to I'm, cure. Yeah. And <laughs> a pound? Well, that, no. I, no, I don't know. I don't know. Why well, ask these kind of questions I don't right know. now? I should have thought it out. Yeah. Better. But um, now, as a parent, mm-hmm. we know we're shut down until the 19th, which is the Tuesday after the MLK holiday. Correct. What do I need to be looking for? For I mean, I have three kids in the district. Right. What do I need to be looking at? Well, the, one of the first things that we need to do, and this is something we're going to ask parents to do, and listen, I'm just as guilty as this as anybody else, okay? Because I have kids just jump, hop, jump the fence and come into my backyard all the time, okay? We've got to kind of, as parents, we have got to corral our kids a little bit better and, and keep them separated a little bit better. That's That's one thing. Uh, that'll help slow down some of this stuff. The other thing, too, is it's just watch them closely and go get them tested. If, you, if they start exhibiting system, symptoms, that way you know what's going on for certain. Okay. And kids, kids, it, it affects, it seems to affect kids a lot differently than adults. Kids don't seem to get it nearly as badly. They don't have some of the health issues that you've seen so many other people have with it. And uh, so, you know... It, it, it is. It's incredibly important. We watch them closely, kind of keep them separated, kind of kind of keep them at home as best we can. Let's kind of let this thing, you know, run its course, hopefully, and we'll be back down to where we need to be. And I know for if you're a high school parent, your your kids are going to have work on Canvas. Right. We, we, we've, we're familiar right. with Canvas by this point. Right. Um, I know in my classroom, we use it even face-to-face. They right. know that everything's on Canvas. Uh, and so middle school, intermediate school, elementary school parents just need to make sure they're in contact and understand that their kid right. does have work. Right. And the, and the thing is, the kids should know what exactly what to do. Because that's one of the things that we hit really hard when we went to face-to-face and when we started school out. You know, I wanted a day every day of the week that the kids who were face-to-face were basically, we call it a virtual day, is is they, they would go and log on and do uh, whatever they needed to do online. So that way, in case we had to shut down, well, they got to the house. Hey, I got it. I know exactly what to do. And so that's, hopefully that's going to well, work and, out. And I think it's important that they understand it is a face-to-face instructional shutdown, not a school shutdown. Correct. Virtual learning is going Correct. to happen. There's work that Correct. they are accountable yeah, for. Yeah, it, it's not a closure shutdown, nobody doing nothing. We're, we're not a holiday. No, we are we are starting up. As teachers know, everyone knows that Tomorrow, boom, it should be online and going. Uh, my, and, my kids will have a quiz on the Byzantine Empire on Canvas. There you go. And so there it's there. Go. It's ready to go. And I'm so, going to put you up for Teacher of the Year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, you know, I'll thank all my mentor teachers at yeah, the time. Yes, yes. Um, but, you know, and uh, it's important because the, the biggest problem that we had when we shut down for the week earlier is – they treat it like a holiday. Right. And all of right. a sudden we come back and all these kids have right. zeros in the grade book and right. everybody's freaking out. Everybody's it's, freaking out. No, 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 no. No, it's going. No, there is instruction. It's going. It's different, but it's going. Yes. And that's and that's what everybody's going to have to understand too. And and parents need to know too, if they have any issues whatsoever with any of that stuff, email the teacher directly. Uh, we're going to have, teachers are going to be available from their homes Thursday and Friday uh, because we're going to be cleaning everything sure. uh, and scrubbing. And then, but come back on Monday 
teachers will be in the classrooms working on stuff and doing what they're supposed to be doing as far as online goes and staying after kids, uh, they'll have a normal day from 8 to 3.30. Yeah. So uh, reach out. If you're having issues, do not hesitate to reach out immediately. Absolutely. And, you know, all the teachers are familiar with their own online yeah. processes. Yes. Uh, you know, my process might be slightly different than, say, right. Ms. Milner's. And so don't call the front office for help with my class. Go to Ms. Milner. Contact me or Ms. Yes. Milner, whoever directly. And, and you know, it's yep. our job to get right. back to them. Right. Um, now, athletically, that's going to be the other thing that yep. everybody has questions about yep. is, well, you know, school, we're going remote. What do we do with athletics? We're going to go to a varsity only. Correct. Uh, practice and game schedule. Correct. So all sub varsities, meaning JV and junior high, right. no practice, no, no competition. Games. Correct. And, uh, yeah, that's, and, that, and, and one of the, you know, that's, you know, we talked about earlier, I guess we, we got into this conversation, uh, when we shut down at the high school, uh, in the fall, but, you know, one of the things that we want to make sure to do is we, those kids have been working. We don't want to disrupt that. If, if, if no one's sick, no one's got any issues, we don't want to disrupt what's going on there and they're in the middle of the district. So, uh, that's why we made the decision we did. And, and also, as far as going to the games, it's, it's family only. Uh, you know, okay. you just can't – someone in the community who has no ties at all just walk in and sit down because they love to sit down and watch the game. But this is going to be, you know, family siblings only. I well, know. and wonderful time to plug. Yes, it is. That PilotPointBearcats.com, we broadcast all of the home games on our YouTube channel. Yes. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure we can get the link out as quickly as possible to games so that people can find them in a variety of places. But maybe that'll ease a little bit of yeah. the, the congestion there. Um, is there anything else that, that we need to pass along to the parents? You know, this is this is something that I know has happened very quickly. But that's one of the things that we've talked about this entire time, that whenever we have to make the decision, most likely it would be fast. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, just understand that. I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to put some parents in a bind, and we're sorry about that. I mean, but... I, Honestly, we, we feel like it's the best decision. And, and we talked about maybe, okay, staying another day or two and, and then shutting it down. And then we got to talk about, well, now we're, you're infecting more kids. If yeah. you know, You've got the opportunity to spread it even more and it get worse. So, let, no, let's just do it. So, just to recap, because we know we're going to have people then, and the, there's going to be information that's out there that's going right. to be hearsay. Right. This is more of a preventative shutdown than Absolutely. we have an outbreak. Right. In the total of the near 1400 kids that pilot point isd right. serves right we have 18 confirmed cases 18 confirmed cases but 17 of them have not even stepped foot on campus this semester and that's including some that are faculty not even kids correct and so you're looking at under one percent infection rate right so we're not this is no we're, we're not all of a sudden no you know starting the movie outbreak and we have no. to, you know no. we're it's preventative. It's preventative, and it was just there's signs there that you just don't like, and it just is kind of like you know we need to do something here. We just we just felt like when we started looking at the numbers, we just said, man, we just we just don't like this, and and that's what we said the entire time. If we don't feel like we like it, we're going to shut it down. The, I, I think we've implied ever since last spring break that this was inevitable. Oh yeah. It, it was oh, yeah. it, the the re shutdown was just inevitable. Oh yeah, and it was preparing for it and making it as seamless as possible to right. where it wasn't a big shock to the system. Right, and then when we walk all back in on the nineteenth, it's just back to normal. And it is very possible that this may not be this. This could happen again yeah. uh, this semester. I mean, who knows? Sure, but you know. Right now, we feel like it's the best course of action for kids. We want to keep everybody safe. We want to keep school going as much as we can, and 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 you know, and our and our concern too is, is keeping our faculty and staff members safe as well. So, absolutely. You know. Now, we're minus chance today. Correct. So I will play contrarian. Very good. Okay. Um, if a kid does not have access to internet, mm -hmm. what recourse do we have? What uh, now, as a teacher, I'm going to tell you. The Canvas app for high school kids is very functional and very awesome. And I see every kid in that school have their phone out at all times. So I'm kind of out on that as an excuse that they, they yeah. can't get to it. But yeah. for the for the younger kids, they just need to reach out at a campus reach level. Reach out at the campus level. I think okay. most of it, because, you know, one of the things that when we uh, shut down the first time back in March of uh, 2020, uh, we didn't take up a lot of those uh what I'm trying to say is a lot of people still have those devices. Sure. And so, but if they do not have one, reach out to the campus. 
uh, give them a shout, and we will get that taken care of. It, to the best of our ability. Best of our ability, and, yes. And we'll either accommodate or mod- whatever modify we can do. whatever we need to do. Um, yeah. And then yeah. the other thing is, um, you know, a, a very important part of – part of our community is, is food service is there going to be yep. any food service availability or we are working on that that okay. is that is one thing that i don't have figured out quite yet sure uh but yes we are going to be doing that we haven't figured out yet if we're going to do it a daily thing or if we're going to do it a couple times a week or exactly okay. we've got established drop-off points and we pretty much already have that done but sure. we've got to line up drivers and and those sorts of things so yes they we need to that. probably watch social media yes we will put put that sort of stuff out on facebook and also on our website okay all right well i i think that's all the questions i have i know i'm probably disappointing chance by not <laughs> asking something that really puts you in a bind um or he's not Poor here chance. to fuss about something yeah, or yeah. you know um yeah. whatever but uh well, we sure we sure thank you for uh, for you know stepping out here and, and what I always like about this is people get to hear it straight from yeah. you. Um, yeah. They don't. It, it's not what you read on Facebook. It's not right. what you heard when right. you ran into Susie at Brookshire's. Right. It it's it is what it is. Right. Um, and we can just hope to make the best of it. Yep. That's all we can do. Now, right, man. is there any way we can talk you out of Pee Wee basketball retirement? <laughs> no, I need some help with my seventh graders. No, I do. no, no, okay. no. I, I'm right. helping. I'm helping. I'm helping Zach with Avery, and that that's that's enough right there. Trust okay. me, that's right. enough. We we the screen and roll thing is killing us right now. Oh, so it's tough. it's tough. But those third graders will get down the screen and roll eventually. Well, and I, I saw you at the basketball games last night, and I was thinking you were probably going to hand down some southern wisdom. Uh, but it never came. No, so. no, I had too much. I had, unfortunately, I had too much COVID on my mind at that time because I knew what was going on. <laughs> yeah, so. You knew what was coming. Yeah. Well, we sure appreciate this. And uh, this sit down with Todd was uh, brought to you commercial free by our generous sponsors Dana Walker with Germania Insurance, Puzzle Printing, Southern Junkies, Ashley Marsh Photography, The Pilot Point Post Signal, and last but not least, Chandler Cabinets. And as always, go Bearcats. <laughs>